What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy Beehive Radio. Shout it! Stepping in the building, I got my A Town fam off in this thing. Shout it, Red. What's good with it, my dog? What's happening with you, man? Feeling good, feeling great. Now, shout it! Mm. I got to start off by saying appreciate you pulling up on the play in this thing, oh, boss. No, man, come on, man. You know you family, so hey, that's easy. I mean, I got to talk about this production. I want to talk about this music. I want to talk about everything in this thing. Shout it! Let's get my it. first question is this, man. When it comes to the art of production, man, what the hell do you think it takes to be a legendary producer? Because, see, I done seen mm. a lot of producers come and go, but only a few producers' music lasts forever, and you fall into that forever category. So how the hell do I get into that forever category if I'm a producer, <laughs> nigga? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just, it just you got to love what you're doing. You got to love music. You know what I'm saying? Like, people just, I'm a producer. Yeah. I don't make beats just to get I'm a check. With you. you know what I'm saying? I actually like love music. I love playing piano. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when people call me, um, I try to give them the best of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And mix it with the best of them. You know? Yeah. Not yeah. just a beat. You exactly. know what I'm saying? I'm trying to produce something. You know, like a lot of my hits, you know what I'm saying? It's like they classic. Come on. You know, because we really put that time and that work in there. You know what I'm saying? It's music. It's musical. When you think about hits, Sexual Seduction with Snoop Dogg, man, mm. that was a major, <laughs> huge hit. Right, right. First of all, how the hell did you even meet Snoop Dogg? Uh, DJ. And, come on. DJ Funky and Daz. You know, Daz would come <laughs> come to my house all the time and record, and, and him and Corrupt. That and nigga go to Daz. The club. Yeah. You know, we'd go pull up on Funky and stuff like that, so. Mm -hmm. It, you know, Daz and, and Funky always went hard for me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He like, man, you gotta do something with Shaw. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And uh, I was always doing records with Daz, so Daz would be playing the records for Snoop. Mm. And then it just, we, we we finally ended up just, you know, knocking it out. When that song went crazy, man, what was going through your mind by that time? Because see, by that time, you done had so <laughs> much damn success, Shawty. It, it wasn't new to you by then. So, right, right. I mean, did, did it strike you like any other hit did, or was this a whole different kind of motion you had going with this? Nah, it was like I finally, I finally got to do what I really wanted to do. Okay, which was show them that I got another sound because I was like trapped out. I was, mm. you know, what I'm saying all this. I, I done produce everybody in the city. Yeah, everything sounded repetitive and the same. Like, so I wanted to do something big where I could get like the Katy Perry checks and yeah. Britney Spears. I wanted to go over there, but. You know, they was like, he the drama producer, he the Jeezy producer, he this. Yeah. So when Snoop gave me the opportunity to do something different, he was ego tripping. Mm. And he liked the, the Drifter record. Yeah. You know, and I knew he liked Prince. I was just mm. like, let me put ATL bass, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, with some Prince keys. Yeah. And then the rest is just going to be me. My you know God. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? When that song was going all over the world with it, did you think it was gonna be that big of a smash hit though? Nah, not to not 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 really because, you know, I was more happy that Snoop, when I sent the, the record to Snoop, he recorded it the same day, sent My it God. back to me, told me to go play it in the strip clubs. <laughs> like literally. Like he, he was like, nephew, I'm finna record it. As soon as I get to LA, I'm finna record it, I'm gonna send it to you and I want you to do what you do. Mm. And he sent it to me. And he was like, this is my first single. Like, that was it. He was like, this is the first single right here. No ifs, ands, buts. Okay, and uh, 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 shout it. So you got Snoop Dogg's first single. We ain't talking about any random artist's first single. We talking about Snoop Frog yeah. and Dogg here. Right. And you got the first <laughs> lead off single for his new project that he's about to drop. You already know what kind of attention that's going to garner. Right, right. What was going through your uh, mind at that time, sir? I mean, you know, I was just... Mm. I was in that realm like, man, this Uncle Snoop. I'm, I'm partners with Snoop. I got his first single. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've been knowing him for years, though. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, to finally get that that placement in it mm -hmm. was something that I wanted to do musically yeah. and different to prove that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not just trap producing. That's a fact. And I wrote it, so, you know, it was a win-win for me. Exactly. You know what I mean? With that and Drifter being around the same time, what kind of mode was you in <laughs> production-wise and artistically when you were just in that thing just drifting and damn sensual seductions all over oh, the damn place? Like when I did Drifter, 
um, my partner Fat Boy Beats, mm-hmm. um, he did that beat, you know, okay. and it was a trap beat. Mm-hmm. So I was like, nah, let's make this Atlanta bass, let's make it booty shape. Ooh. So when we did that, my homegirl Roxy Reynolds was was at the crib. My God. And we used to always just get in the mic, you know, get in the booth and, you yeah. know what I'm saying, just play around with songs. And yeah. Drifter was really like me just freestyling. We was drunk off the Remy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the version they put out <laughs> that I can't stand, but, yeah. you know, it, it ended up making me do sexual seduction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when people ask me about drift, I'll be like, oh, man, but it's a win-win. How does that make you feel, though, when you look at that drifter? How big do you think it would have gotten if it would have went out the right way or the way you envisioned it? I mean, I would have been on tour with Snoop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, and, and a lot of Atlanta DJs wouldn't have been mad at me <laughs> yeah. because a New York DJ broke the record first. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I had to go. Spend some, break some bread like in the club to, to, to redeem myself. It wasn't my fault. It was the label, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to go make it rain a couple times. 